Um, really excited to be here. It's been a wonderful season. Um, being a seven seed, not having to completely sweat it out on the bubble was was nice. But uh, got a really good good group um, that have really propelled this program over the last three years, um, making consecutive NITs and then finally graduating to where we're playing the NCAA. So really excited. Start right in front. Yeah. Uh, Greg Woods, spokesman review. Kyle, what more have you picked up on? I know you tell you watch their uh, game against Indiana State, but what more have you picked up on them in terms of film and uh, you know, things like that? You know, they're just really well coached team put together. Uh, you know, we'd call them Baby Bird. <laughs> you know, Larry, little Larry, um, Tucker DeVries, and uh, kind of plays, even though he's not, doesn't bring the ball up the floor all the time, but it's almost like they're put together. A little like the Dallas Mavericks with Luka. I mean, he averages 3.6 assists. He's a really good scorer. And then they have really good guys that fit with him as far as guys that can bang threes and guard their position, and they share the ball. So they're a pretty complete team. And they're used to being here. I think this is their third trip the last four years. Um, so it'll, it'll be a tough game. Their center's good, too. Big, big body, big body. A little bit like the last center we played, Lampkins from Colorado. So... Um, um, it's just there's not a lot of holes, and this time of year, that's what you expect. There's going to be um, good teams, and we have a size advantage, but some they're number one defensive rebounding team in the country uh, as far as percentage they give up. So that just tells me they're really, really good habits, really well coached. Down here in the left-hand corner, Coach. Yes. Dave Bowling, Spokane. Um, doing a thing on Isaac. When you look at the path he has taken to the NCAAs, that is not the customary route that talented players yeah. take to get here. Does that develop, do you, you think, a sense of character and uh, appreciation for it more? What do you see out of him uh, uh, based on that? You know, he's an unbelievable story. You know, he's just he's grown a little bit, obviously, and he's just grown as a person. I, I haven't been around a guy that's more humble i always say he's got one speed i mean he's the same every day he's very, what you see is what you get he's a pretty subdued guy and i think that's probably why he didn't probably he's just not a guy that's going to pump pump out his chest much and um and uh you know grew up in the junior college ranks COVID probably had something to do with just how a lot of guys uh, jalen wells probably slipped through because of that and he's a big relationship guy and that's what brought him to idaho actually he's just they'd recruit him for 15 months and he felt really comfortable, and we got in there late and weren't able to beat Idaho. That's reality, and and it's just our fortune that we got him one year. Would have loved to have him two, um, but he's just, uh, I mean, he's a pretty simple guy, and what you see is what you get. I mean, his faith is really important to him. Uh, I think that keeps him grounded. Uh, his uh, mom's, I believe his mom's pastor, and dad, dad's really, you know, they're in Spanaway, and just a, just a great story. He's really appreciative, and we're really, it's a good match, too. We're really thankful to have him. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it does. Jamie, Vin <coughs> excuse me, Jamie Vin at Cougfan.com. Coach, there were some quotes going around on uh, social media yesterday about you on, I think, sports radio in Seattle talking about how you're working on a contract extension in Love Pullman and so on. Uh, is there any more kind of context or color you can add to that about maybe what the future holds after uh, the tournament does conclude? Not really. I just, I'm just waiting for see what they're presenting and that stuff and. We'll figure it out. We got a good program. We need to be treated as such, and um, we'll let those, those things will handle themselves. Left hand side, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, kind of following up on that. Uh, obviously, you, uh, you know your name has kind of bubbled up for some other jobs uh, around the country. Uh, I guess when you're here at the NCAA tournament, trying to focus on what you're doing here, how do you manage that when you have some outside noise where your name keeps coming up? You don't follow anything, to be honest. I, I, I'm, everyone says they bury their head. Uh, I do. I just try to stay in my room. I got my beats. I'm ready to go pump in my gospel. <laughs> I go gospel, country, hip hop. I go whatever. I try to do it, but it's it's hard these days. I said I realized I was telling someone that I hadn't been to it. Last time I was in the NCAA tournament was 14 years ago, and it was almost pre-social media. So it's like everyone's asking, how do your guys stay focused? And I said, they don't, but that you just try to do the best you can. Um, just this fear of missing out and rumors and gossip. And part of what, part of what brings the, the excitement to the deal, but, you know, I, we owe it to these guys to give our best effort and do that, and they've been awesome all year. And uh, so that's what we try to do. 
Uh, Miles has not made a three in over a month by now. Um, one, have you been able to pick up on any like tendencies that are leading him to miss? And two, like as he's kind of been in a drought, have you noticed defenses are guarding him in, you know any differently? No, I, I think it's a fatigue factor, probably mental a little bit. Just probably playing him too many minutes, put a little bit on us. So just and you know that light's gotten bright for all of us. Like just we're competing for a Pac-12 championship and. and uh, and I'm telling you, we were getting, you know, different coverages and different things. You kind of got to go through it. And, and uh, like I said, I honestly, against Colorado, he had – and that's usually a tell when he has a bad decision. I'm like, And that's what I need to probably, like, hey, get over here, get rested up, get back out there. But you get these long medias, and you're like, hey, we can – he's going to be rested. <laughs> it's like – and like I said, it's hard to take him out. Um, but he probably – a little bit of that, probably just fatigue. He's a first-year player playing both sides of the ball. Um, you know, I, I think he'll break through, but we've been pretty good even though he hasn't, so it'd be it's it's bonus. <laughs> Make a couple, I think we we can run away from some people. We're in the back and then we're up front in the front. Go ahead. Uh, Mike Casel Sports, I have a question for Gianna Cephalo, Kaylee WTV. Um oh sorry. First time in sixteen years making an NCAA tournament. How are you guys handling the attention slash mentally preparing? Uh, like I said, I, I'm not sure because you really can't. We talk about it to prepare them, but it's when you got to experience it. And the days get a little long in doing stuff like that. And you're, they separate you away from your team. But we talked about it and told them to kind of get it. And, and uh, I'll let you know tomorrow night at 9.06 how we handled it. Um, but uh, And it's been a while. It's been a while for, for all of us, for me. Um, but it's exciting to be here and honored. And it's just humbled. It's awesome. It's like... I told the international guys who recruit them, I said, it's like, it's like World Cup. <laughs> World Cup every March, you know, for us. And that's how people follow it. Everyone's got a bracket. So um, until you're in it, you don't really know. But it's, it's awesome to be in it. Coach, just to follow up on, uh, again, the quote from earlier, one thing that was mentioned was, uh, oh. <laughs> was uh, sustained success and being able to find a way to, to do that. In kind of in your eyes, what are those values and priorities to sustaining success, even with moving to the WCC next year? You know, basketball. I said uh, it's not like football that you have to be in a conference and finish the Final Four. They're they're expanding as well. There's 68 teams that make it every year in a program. It's uh, I think we made a name for ourselves. Two NITs now in NCAA. You know when you can tell by the recruits are hanging in there. <laughs> they want to hear what you have to say instead of begging them to come. So I think that part. It's uh, the branding of our program being basketball. And then, like I said, it, it doesn't um, – it's pretty neat. WCC has one of the m most marketable teams in the country. You know, we used to call them Duke West. And uh, there's another one that, that I worked at that was pretty good. And, and of course, Santa Clara is coming on in a big way. <laughs> San Fran is not bad either. So there's a bunch of them. But uh, it's a basketball – I like the fact that it's a basketball. There's no football there. So it's uh, very basketball-centric and pretty exciting. Uh, moving forward, that you can, you can keep building on that. Yep, stay in the front row. Thank you. I'm curious about uh, Andre Solder. Um, what is his like rehab or not rehab, but just kind of getting that right? And when he's out there, does he look like himself to you, or like how is that changing the way he plays at all? Uh, you know, I, I felt like it. What did he tell you? I could hurt. I didn't hear his answer, but. Yeah, I, I, he's, he's a tough kid. He's going through it. I mean, I, I kind of heard what his answer, and he probably knows better than me. But I honestly don't know. I noticed if he got hit in the Washington game early in the game, and I think he was – and that was senior night, and I was just like, yeah, man, let's get this guy, see if he can get it done. And in the last couple of minutes, pulled him out of there. But but I felt like the last um, – in the conference tournament, I felt different. I felt like he was okay. And the back-to-back might have been – might have been a little much, but a lot of things happen in those back-to-backs where you're just – you're turn around quickly and – he missed a layup early in the game. It, I, don't, I don't think it had anything to do with the shoulder, but it could have. He wouldn't say really if it did. That's how kind of guy he is. I noticed uh, Joe Yesifu was around uh, the team earlier. Um, just kind of, is he going to be on the bench tomorrow? And do you kind of have an update on what maybe the future looks like for him with uh, potential medical redshirt? Yeah, I don't know. That's the medical redshirt. I think it's probably a possibility with the NCAA that those things seem to be, um, you know, they're empathetic or sympathetic to to a guy that has an injury like that um and i'm yeah if he's uh, if we, we got enough room he's uh, he's always welcome on the bench <laughs> he's our guy he's our teammate so it's good to have him back he's uh he's really a light bulb of a personality and he he really made a 
amazingly a big imprint on these guys when, over the summer and the early in the season. And even though he's not contributing on the court, he's still well thought of and, and uh, beloved. Yep. Go ahead. I might have asked you this already, but uh, it seems like the more or like the better Isaac plays, the quicker and more double teams he's seeing. I think he spun out of one for a dunk against Colorado. Um, is he seeing? I mean, have you noticed kind of an uptick in those, and how can he kind of manage those the best? You know, I had, that's a good question. I mean, I think he's he's really. Like I said, he's such a pleasant person. Like he's really unselfish, and he wants to score. He likes to score, but he makes the most. Usually, makes the right play out of the double. He's had a little little tricky when they've gone the triple, <laughs> and they'll come get his ball on the, off the dribble and the, the guard. So, um, seen more of it. But like I said, he's pretty unselfish. And that's why the, you know we've talked about our shooting woes on the perimeter. They got to knock down some shots, take some heat off them, and and honestly. We're anticipating Drake doing something like that, and I don't think that's what they want to do and what they normally do. But we're anticipating them uh, watching film and saying they're gonna they'll do they'll do something to try to get the ball out of his hands or stop him from operating down there because um, he's that kind of player. He's pretty darn good. Coach Julio with uh, Julio Rousseo with the score. You mentioned your international guys. What's the philosophy in terms for you and your staff in recruiting? international guys how do you sell Pullman Washington to guys who may not have you know may, may not know of Eastern Washington and, and why do you feel it it has been important to build your build the roster around a couple of key international players yeah well it's been um, a little bit the my previous stops have had international contacts recruit and had to recruit the globe and it's been just build those relationships and you get a place like Pullman where there's just not a big population we got to go a long ways just to see a local high school game for us is Spokane and there's probably one prospect every year so we have to do that and then uh have you ever been to North Macedonia it's probably probably looks a lot like uh, Eastern Washington from what I know so it's like he doesn't know any better he's good and it, it's great so um I think there's really humble and appreciative and it's and it's a funny how things have changed over the last 20 years I think with international guys for someone like Andre Yakimovsky to come over here or Ruben Chinyalu and become leaders in the basketball program, that was never happening 20, 25 years ago. Now he's our fourth year captain um, and uh, it's been really a big part of the success of the program. 